I'm a funny guy. Some might even call me hilarious. What some people don't know, however, is that I'm crazy shy. If I was called on in school, my palms would get sweaty, my voice would get shaky, and I'd freeze. Most of the time, I'm just the quiet guy in the corner. The only time I've ever felt comfortable was telling a joke. But even so, I'm often afraid, because if people don't like my sense of humor, it means they don't like me. Growing up, I went to a very modern, non-denominational, charismatic church. Dancing and speaking in tongues were the norm. I'd compare it to a slightly watered-down version of the documentary Jesus Camp. <laughs> I went three times a week and was very much, as DC Talk put it, a Jesus freak. <laughs> I always admired the freedom and boldness of those proclaiming the power of Christ. I'd watched the worship minister and the preacher and knew I wanted to be like them. Not preaching or singing, but up in front of people, captivating an audience. My first chance to do just that came in high school when I hosted the video announcements. Each week we had a student of the week in the local paper. I'd take the article and change up some of the student's accomplishments. Henry Regan can and likes to eat his own weight in fish. <laughs> the performance bug continued and I tried my hand at an open mic. I couldn't get off the courage to do it straight, so in an Andy Kaufman-inspired twist, I donned some broken glasses, a frumpy sweater, and wrote out some truly awful jokes on note cards. When it was my turn, I stared at the note cards and mumbled into the microphone. My friends were planted in the audience yelling things like, get off the stage, and you suck. When it came time to go to college, I decided to hang out with my high school friends for four more years. I thought, whatever, the future will take care of itself. My friends, all members of the Church of Christ, were headed to the uber-conservative Abilene Christian University. The Church of Christ was a vastly different denomination than mine, but the thought of going to school somewhere where I didn't know anybody terrified me. So I bucked up and followed them. ACU was very old school, meaning no musical instruments, and women weren't allowed to preach or lead any kind of prayer. So the daily chapels and local churches just bored the crap out of me. I needed some excitement with my Jesus. My friends, who were also my roommate's sophomore year, were Bible majors, which meant they had to visit and study different kinds of churches. Not being a Bible major meant I spent most Sundays lounging around in my pajamas eating cereal. I'd stopped looking for a church home because sitting around all day and was easier and remarkably gratifying. <laughs> One Sunday morning, however, my roommates started talking excitedly about the black church they were going to. Want to come with us, they asked. Of course I'd want to go to a black church. I'd seen Blues Brothers. <laughs> These were my type of people. I was finally going to get me some real Jesus, and in my mind, I would be my friend's liaison to a church filled with dancing and prophesying. When we got to this church out in the middle of nowhere, we realized we were the only white people. Nobody had any idea what we were doing there, and I wanted to be like, Hey guys, I'm one of you, trust me. <laughs> My friends had to talk me out of sitting on the front row. We compromised and sat somewhere in the middle and we were warmly greeted. The singing and dancing wasn't all that different from what I grew up with. Maybe it was a bit more energetic and rhythmic than the white people I went to church with. <laughs> but it was familiar. During the sermon, there was a lot of positive affirmation from the audience, lots of preach it brothers and thank you Jesuses. And then I heard the preacher growl, I feel like doing some prophesying. Well, this is exciting, I thought. <laughs> Sister Sheila, you've been feeling a little under the weather, but I assure you that God is going to heal you. This was met with a lot of enthusiastic amen. Brother Alex, the Lord is telling me you're having some financial problems. But he's also telling me if you trust in him, he will provide. And the congregation chimed in with, Preach on, brother. 
I was on to his game. He was, he was picking low-hanging fruit. These were get-well-soon cards and friendly platitudes. <laughs> That's when he got to my row. The preacher started with my friend on my left. What's your name? Jason. All right, Jason, you're about five foot nine, 190 pounds. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Height and weight? <laughs> this turned from prophecy to carnival sideshow. <laughs> Jason, you're going to be a mighty servant of the Lord. You're going to be a youth pastor who leads the young to the Lord. My friend Jason nodded with humble acceptance. The preacher turned to my other friend. What's your name? Brian. Brian, you're about six foot six, 210 pounds. <laughs> You're going to do great works in the mission field, traveling the globe for the Lord. Everybody at ACU was already doing mission work, except for me, that is. So that was an easy guess. Ryan nodded and said thank you. The preacher's eyes went from Ryan's to mine, and his smile disappeared. He stared me down and addressed the congregation. Everyone. Turn and look right here. <laughs> look at this young man. What's your name, young man? Derek? He brought his hands up to his face in contemplation. Everybody take a good look at Derek. <laughs> he is a very special young man. I stiffened up and all coherent thought left my brain. He inched closer. Now, Derek? These jokes you like to play? These cranks you like to pull? Well, you're going to keep doing them. But you're going to do them for the Lord. <laughs> you're going to make people laugh for the Lord. <laughs> he turned away from me. Everybody give Derek a hand. The congregation broke out in applause. My heart was pounding. Finally, did you hear that, world? God says I'm special. <laughs> and he said it out loud. <laughs> in front of people. <laughs> this kid who'd been hindered by shyness his whole life was called forth by God to do his comedy bidding. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, who is on first? <laughs> I had to go back. This would be my new church home. I would be there every Sunday, spreading laughter and mirth to the congregation. <laughs> but the next Sunday was Thanksgiving break, and I was back home eating leftover turkey, rubbing it in everybody's faces about how special I was. <laughs> and when the next Sunday rolled around, I was in my dorm room weighing getting up and driving out to the middle of nowhere to go to church versus a day of sloth. Turns out that laziness would win that Sunday, and, well, every Sunday that followed. I really believed that I would go back, but never did. A few years later, my friend Jason became a full-time youth pastor. And not too long after that, I was on a plane to Thailand because Ryan was getting married to a local girl he'd met there, he'd met there doing social work, mission work. As for me, I'm an improv comic performing regularly at Dallas Comedy House. So kudos to the pastor for pretty much nailing it. <laughs> the only problem is I'm now agnostic and don't really feel like I'm telling jokes for the Lord or even know what that looks like. But still, it's the prophecy that keeps me thinking that maybe, just maybe, there is some grand purpose and meaning to life and the jokes I'm compelled to tell. And my debilitating shyness, well, now whenever a joke pops into my head, I, I don't worry about what the people around me will think. Instead, I think, F it, Jesus told me to tell this joke. 